God, cast your net wide today. Catch us up in your love through the preaching and the hearing of your word. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. How are your nets? How are your nets? Are you like Peter and Andrew, whose nets were strong and sturdy, ready to catch a boatload of fish? Or are you more like James and John, whose nets were torn and tattered and in need of mending? And it kept them from getting out there on the boat with the rest of the fishermen. How are your nets? It's interesting whom Jesus called to that day when he was walking on the Sea of Galilee. As he walked along the shore, he could see Peter and Andrew's boat far off. And the two of them were busy with the work of fishing. And as they were casting their net, you could tell that these guys knew what they were doing. They knew that you needed good, strong nets to catch all of those fish. If your net is torn or weak or has holes in it, then the, the fish are just going to slip right through as you try to haul it into the boat. And you'll just watch your money and your livelihood slip right back into the water. So Jesus saw these men and he called to them. We don't know why he singled these fishermen out. But he called to them. Now they were pretty far out, so he probably had to cup his hands over his mouth. And he called out, hey! fishermen, but 
they were not where they wanted to be in life. We don't know why they were stuck in their boat on the shore. Maybe there was a reason why their nets were in need of mending. They should have been out there with all the other fishermen, bringing in the catch of the day, but instead, they were stuck on the shore. Maybe it was because they had brought in so much fish the day before that their nets had torn and maybe they just needed mending, but I'm guessing that these were two guys that probably when they cast their nets out, were hauling in only old tires and rusty fish hooks. <clears throat> these were guys that maybe didn't take good care of their nets all along, maybe made some mistakes with their nets, let them get caught on the rocks, maybe didn't wash them out afterwards and all of that salt ate away at the fibers. Maybe they were just too lazy to do basic maintenance on their nets. And maybe they just couldn't bring in enough fish. They had enough to barely make a living, but not enough to put in money for the repairs. And so they kept putting them off and putting them off until they became the joke of all of the other fishermen. Say, hey, there goes James and John. But yeah, the fish like when they go swimming because they like to swim through the holes. It's good practice for them. Maybe they were the butt of all of the jokes of the other fishermen. So when Jesus saw these two guys, they were not far off out on the boat. They were right there on the shore in front of them. They didn't need to be convinced. They didn't need to be caught by a clever phrase or an idea. They didn't need to be sold on the invitation. They knew they needed a new life. They knew that they had made mistakes, that their nets had failed them, and they knew they had nothing to lose. They knew they needed to follow Jesus. How are your nets? Some people are like Peter and Andrew. The world looks at them as successful people. The go-getters who seem to get all the breaks and they have all the luck. Their nets appear to be strong and sturdy and they seem to have it all together. Their families are intact. They've got good jobs. They've got spiffy boats. They're popular and they know how to win friends and influence people. And some people are like James and John. The world looks at them as losers. And people think of them as guys who never really seem to measure up. They make dumb mistakes and they have no one to blame but themselves. Their nets are weak and full of holes. They don't have, have it all together. They've ruined important relationships. They've lost their income, their jobs. They've made a mess of their lives and their boats seem to be permanently grounded on the shores of life. People ignore them or make fun of them and nobody wants to hang out with them. How are your nets? It's interesting the kind of people you find in church, the modern day followers of Jesus. Many people think that the church is only for the Peters and the Andrews of the world. The successful people who seem to live lives of purpose and meaning morally intact people who deserve to follow Jesus. But what people don't often realize about the Peters and the Johns of the world, I'm sorry, the Peters and the Andrews of the world, is that they too once had nets that they weren't too proud of. Nets that had failed them. Nets that had promised to bring in a boatload of fish, 
just brought in nothing but empty water. And they hear this invitation from Jesus. And they know in their hearts that this is the direction that God is calling them to. They know that this is what they really need in their lives, that material and worldly success is not what finally matters. They knew that they needed new nets to work with. And that is the net of the gospel which brings in people and relationships, because that's what really matters. What most people don't realize is that the church isn't out there on some fancy fishing boat with all the shiny, happy people. The church is on the shore where Jesus was that day, calling out to the Peters and the Andrews, and also to the James and John, the ones who need to see the new nets face to face. The church is the place where we come to mend our nets, and where we come to create new ones. See, that's the key. Jesus is about making the net work. Get it? The net work. Jesus is about reaching out to those who have those nets that are messed up and helping them to unravel the knots and to mend the fibers and to connect with a network of people who can then reach out to others who are hurting, reach out to others whose nets are in need of mending, who are ready for something different in their lives. That's one of the things that you're going to want to look for when you're calling your next pastor. You'll want to find one who's going out there on the shore doing the work of Jesus, calling out to people, bringing you out to call to people who are out there on the boat and who are on the shore, connecting them, joining them together, and making the net work. Because the church is meant to be a place that helps people repair their damaged lives. It's meant to be a place where people can come together to talk about the things that are ripping apart our nation. Things like racism, things like violence that have been overcoming our nation in the last week, in the last years. The church is to be a place where we can come together and talk about healing, and bringing people together in a tangible way to start making new nets, nets that work. The church is about bringing in Peter and Andrew and James and John to make those nets of people who will make the difference in this world. And that's what we do in this congregation. We have so many nets that are interconnected. Nets in our small groups, in our committees, in our worship services. This is one big net here. Nets that come together with our youth. And our youth today, are, many of them are going to Camp Mount Luther and more in the coming weeks to connect with other youth to make more networks of young people who will fish for others. The church is about bringing together all of those different fish, all of those different colors and sizes and shapes. Today we will welcome our newest little guppy. Where is he? <laughs> Here he is. Here is Noah. Noah, our newest little fish, will be welcomed into the net today. And we will teach him what it means to join together with people from all walks of life, 
people who are older than him, people who are younger than him, people who are of a different skin colors, different or sexual orientation, different genders, different, all kinds of different fish who Jesus catches up in this net. This little guppy is being brought in today. No matter how your nets are, Jesus wants your nets. Jesus wants you. You are precious to the fishermen. You are loved. Each of us, no matter whether you are Peter and Andrew or James and John, you are being given new nets. And I can guarantee you, in the weeks and months ahead, you will be bringing in an entire catch of fish that you have not yet even met. You are part of the network. And God's work is great indeed. Amen.